Hello and welcome to Joe Kakaka's Evangelion podcast. I'm Jim. I'm Sam. This is it, Sam. We're here. We're doing the AvaCast. We're talking about episodes 16 through 18 of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yeah, we're the doing, original version. We're doing another three episode one because Jim said we can't then stop at the second the second episode. We got. Yeah, this was clearly. <laughs> I don't know if this was an oversight on my part, but it would have been dumb for us to only do the two episodes here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so what did you think of this little batch? That Pro- we just probably like my favorite, like kind of like batched episodes so far. A lot to think about, a lot of like setting up, I guess, as well. Yeah, Ava is is really good. Like, I think um, we kind of had so last time we talked about the uh, we had the flashback. No, sorry, the recap episode, yes. and that kind of signified like a change in the way that these episodes are, very, are really like focusing on it's a very things. clear halfway point and like we're kind of accumulating to something and especially with the tease of like the atom like the behi- stuff going on behind the scenes kind of stuff and it, and the three episodes kind of continue with that yeah and so to i'm just trying to get the name of the one ava because i always or the one what angel the angel so in this episode series of episodes if you're not watching at home which i highly recommend watching along with us at home mm-hmm. it'll make these discussions less insane <laughs> Um, we're talking about episodes 16, which is called The Sickness Unto Death, and then, also known as Splitting of the Breast, and then episodes 17 and 18, which are a two-parter, the the fourth to be qualified, the fourth child, and then Ambivalence. Those are the, the Toji episodes, to- Toji becoming the pilot of Ava Unit 3. Yes. Um, and then the first one, the sorry, episode 16, I did this backwards, is the one with the cool, uh, it's called Leilai. Uh, or Lilil, it's the angel, the twelfth angel, which is the one that is the, the ley lines, the ley line, the, the one that's <laughs> the shadow is actually the body. Yes, um, the cool like circle with a bunch of like pencil strokes through it. Yes, a, the a black and white orb. <laughs> I absolutely love this angel, uh, design wise. It's so fucking cool. Yes, cause that, okay, we basically get that episode, and then no angel, and and I think, and then we basically get the angel the last episode. Yeah. And yeah, it's just I think we're we're at a period of the series where things are a lot more about set taking these characters that we've spent all this time meticulously setting up and kind of just breaking them down. Yeah, it's less about the angels, more about the characters and like the I guess like and like I guess behind the scene stuff going on, cause especially with the with all the ta- you know, Kaji. Uh, Kaji stuff and yeah, it's really funny. I can't we can't talk about it yet, but there is a very very funny podcast moment for the mega 64 podcast <laughs> uh where something happens where they discuss ava sean if mega 64 sean does not like ava and there's something that he gets incredibly wrong about the series <laughs> and it's really funny um but we can't talk about it yet but i'll show it to you later <laughs> all right but it's it like I, I always forget how important kaji is in in the the set of episodes he's, he's there's, like, there's, there's a there's a trope in this show where like characters will just be written out by like either like a throwaway line or like a literal like answering machine message and kaji gets that like in this episode the first episode that we watch where he just like oh he left a message like oh i found a bar and then he just not never really talked about <laughs> yeah he's kind of yeah i guess he's like, like, really in that one it's like the cl- other classmates as well where they're like, they're like oh yeah they went on a trip or like they're not here at school today yeah it's it's very like minimal with the amount of time it can spend with characters sometimes because we're so focused on like the main cast. Yeah. But I think it still does a pretty good job, especially in the two-parter episode 17 and 18. Um, it does really good with uh, Hikari, the class rep. Yes. I like all the stuff with her. She's such a charming character. Yeah. And it just builds your heart. It, you mean it's nice up. to have a normal female character that <laughs> doesn't have, that's not like mentally unhinged in a, certain, like in a, a weird, one way she doesn't have a weird complex about something yes <laughs> she just has a crush on a boy yeah. <laughs> keep it simple but it's, yeah so it's the first episode is just like shinji gets like the 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 highest number for like sync test i guess and he gets kind of you know like hey good His job ego's inflated yeah, and he goes, good job like, and like yay i get him praised and then like Aki's like i don't like that that shinji's a fucking pizza fucking <laughs> shit don't you agree with me ray isn't this shinji just like an asshole he's gonna get his head ball filled you think he's gonna be praised by women and then ray's just like Bye. farewell <laughs> farewell it's, it's, it's a really long elder scrolls conversation then he backed down the farewell farewell <laughs> um so yeah just 
like this episode is just very very good a really really good episode the way it's written i love it yes um the beginning scene we have shinji actually cooking shinji's yes. cooking for the girls uh, look, which is hilarious there is a big thing of people cooking for others in these three-part episodes with a like, class rep prep, like, cooking for him because uh-huh. she, she cooks for her younger siblings and yeah both called? her younger and older siblings younger actually. and older sibling and and uh what's it called Ta- uh, taji toji toji sorry <laughs> yeah it's it's a lot it's a lot of names it's a lot of names it's, and it's your first go through so yeah and uh, he doesn't get there's like but he, he says a line where like no one in my family is able to cook for for me essentially yeah and like when we get a line of saying like he was going to, he only basically gonna be the pilot due to I guess getting him to transfer his sister to yeah. like an actual probably to cover for his like medical or medical re- or like being like cryo frozen or like, stasis just to be like a, like Mister Freeze's yeah Mister Freeze's wife or like anything <laughs> and uh. it, but like it seems to just get like her treated for whatever her issue is but knowing even getting like oh no she just, she died anyway all right well that's a little getting a little ahead of ourselves I know. I, the connection to the food thing is interesting I wonder if that's something that Ano brings to the series like it's also a very Japanese see- thing. <laughs> Well, the whole thing of, of the at school like girl cooking a meal for for the class. Yeah, kind I, th- of thing. I think it's also a very nurturing thing. Like the fact that because Shinji, you can tell that Shinji's just sick of eating all the microwave food that yeah. Misato buys. So I mean, and he's, he's, pro- he's just providing for everyone. And, naturally. He's, and he also probably had to care of himself because he ran away from. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember when this is said. It is very it is literally one line. So I wouldn't be like surprised if we missed it. But Shinji says that he basically went to live with his teacher after he he ran away or whatever. Gendo abandoned him. It looked like more from the flashback. It did look like Gendo abandoned him more than Shinji ran He's away. Literally crying. He's like holding a suitcase, he, crying. He, yes. Like, yeah. Good um, luck. But so yeah, Shinji. And he gaslit him to say, "You ran away from me. You did this." <laughs> <laughs> um, but Shinji lived with like his sensei, yes. his teacher, and, for um, a while. And, so like, that's peop- all we really know about that. And the people that he's living with, I'm like, Asuka is someone that's like, I'm going to marry a rich man that's going to. So I could just be a housewife. He would take care of me and everything. But, like, she has no interest in being, like, the model housewife. She just wants to, like, be taken care of, it feels like. Yeah. And She's very... Uh, I don't know. I don't know about being taken care of. She's very, like, like a... Uh, what's the word? I think, Individualistic. I think she would love want to be the rich ho- trophy wife, but at the same time mm. not do any of that work that involved, like, being a housewife. I don't know. I feel like she's too prideful to be, like, a trophy wife. If... If Kaji... It, it, like, she would love to be the trophy wife. Well, yeah, I get, but she's. Hmm, I think she's just like attracted to Kaji because he's like a little man. Because yeah. well, Sam, have you seen him? He's a, a peak, sex pest, uh, peak male. Uh, <laughs> he's <peak>. a pedo. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's like aggressively pushing against that the whole time. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So as you said, the kind of the big setup in the uh, episode sixteen with the big uh, orb angel is that uh, Shinji is, like, doing the best. Shinji's now, like, Misato says in English, you are number one. I love that. Uh, so, yeah, Shinji. And it's funny because, like, at first it's like, oh, yeah, Shinji, good for him. Like, but, like, he, the, I feel like his, he doesn't get full of himself until, like, Asuka. Goads like, him, yeah. yeah. Uh, Asuka goading him is kind of what. Because she's more to blame than, than anything. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, I don't want to say she's taking advantage of him, but she's definitely playing with his emotions by, like, because, like, even when she's talking to Ray in that scene where she's, like, clearly she's complaining. Yeah. But the way she's saying it, she's like, oh, thank God Shinji did this. Now we don't have to be the ones that do the heavy lifting. Like, it's still very, like, sarcastic yeah. and caustic. But this is also a very, like, Ray-featured episode as well. Like, a little, you get a little bit of her, but, like, for what she has, it's a very, it's a very much for what she, like, acts and, like, does. Ray? Yeah, so. Like, I was waiting for her to slap Asuka, but that didn't come in this episode. We got, we got, we got a slap later on of... I, I think like the relationship between Shinji and Ray, it's so understated at this point that it's yeah. I, like because Ray was just not in. It's like, coming more a few of a episodes. focus, and, and like you, obviously the turning point was like him calling her like a house, like a you'd be a great ho- housewife or something like that. Yeah, and and that wasn't she kind of like realized oh I kind of have feelings for Shinji in some way she doesn't really understand why, yeah. but she she definitely cares for Shinji, and he also saved her too. So yes. that that was like a big like human connection moment that they shared yes yeah, she... but so it's nice that she's kind of like more aware she speaks a lot more than she used to yes and she's actually even like other people like we've seen in later episodes she actually speaks 
this other classmate, which is crazy. It is. It is. When she talks to Toji, it's actually insane. It's weird to think like Toji probably was like shitting his pants when that Not, happened. I don't know. He he had a lot on his mind, ob- as we as we come to know. But like he was very like like it was like it's it's so many things that happen of like oh my god he's talking to another girl that means he's like i was like no way <laughs> no way yeah. man and like even he was a her was just like i can kind of get what you're going with right now about like like everything like he, it was very like normal conversation it was weird yeah all right well, we're still I we're know. getting ahead of ourselves again there's a lot, there's a lot to talk it's about. funny because the way that we watch these episodes like a lot of these things kind of carry over yes but uh so yeah just to go through this episode um, really quickly, they go into battle against the angel. The angel disappears yeah, suddenly. Ley lines. The ley lines. And uh, yeah, Asuka does the thing where she's like, oh, Shinji should be taking point because he's the, the golden child. And Shinji's taking point just like, I'm going to shoot it with this fucking pistol. <laughs> Which, of course, doesn't work. No, and he gets sucked into the void, essentially. And I love how like horrifying this is. Like this Everybody. Is, this is one of like the scariest episodes for the characters. Like They kind of all think that Shinji's dead. Yeah. Uh, and they expect him to die at least like Masato's not like, already like but that was horrified like of like him getting dra- like, sucked in there because like, we know that they only have like 16 hours or whatever of life support in yeah. the eva yes it, it's roughly the estimate uh, and so what i i think it's really great like this is a great so th- episode yes because we just really get to dive into shinji here it's like dive into shinji and then like you see him like, try to make a plan to get him out and like them to like, trying to like so there's a couple things. I, mean, I want to save Shinji for the last thing because okay. like, like there's like the prep thing and like Masato wants to get Shinji out and like and uh, all they care about is just getting Ava one out and like if Shinji's alive. That's a that's a bonus. Like, like, yeah. like we're going to take this time so at best chance we can get Shinji at the last minute. But Ava one is like Risco's like yeah that's what we're doing. Ava one and Masato's like why the fuck do you want to care about Ava one? And she actually slaps her like like saying putting the Ava one's life over Shinji. Yeah. And it's like it's like a like, damn. I was like so hard the glasses fell off slap, and I always <laughs> appreciate that. And it's just like holy shit, like just like you got to. St- there's something up with Ava One. Like what the fuck is going on? Why is it so important? Yeah, and I, I like this kind of background story about Misato uncovering the secrets of Nerve. I like it works the, really well with how everything is. Even like, later on, it's like, like Gendo. Uh, she, Misato's starting to know more. I'm like maybe if you weren't so blunt, obvious with like <laughs> we gotta get Ava One, Ava One, Ava One. Just like you're you are the reason why. Like if even if she didn't get see the Adam thing, you'd, just, you'd be like, oh yeah, there's obviously something going on here. <laughs> But yeah, it was kind of I I I like yeah, love seeing Masato having you know she I mean, she's like, like fully yeah. like um, like she's fully entered like the caregiver like yes. she is like they Shinji's even, like the, she loves Shinji. The even reference of like oh yeah you'd be a great foster mother like yeah but her. that's funny because like it's almost like a dig. R- Ritsuko says that to Misato uh, and it's almost like a dig. It's, against a, her. it's a dig, but like she is like she like cares like as a, as a like you know as like as like a. As a foster yeah, mother, essentially, is a foster because she's she's a she's a, uh, she's a single mother of a gr- of a daughter, a son, and a penguin. <laughs> this is like a new sitcom, uh, a new sitcom. <laughs> Seinfeld, um, Ray yeah. Ray Kramer, <laughs> George is a penguin. George, <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I really I think that like unfortunately Magma Diver we had to talk about it. That is kind of the episode where Misato like can makes a real connection to Shinji because she understands his like backstory is pretty much the same as hers and she yeah. can relate to him so i think that's it's really coming full circle here like misato really does genuinely care for shinji yes and is she's like ritsuko like has to take command of the operation because uh misato wouldn't actually do the whatever she wouldn't carry out their plan but which their plan is crazy but but i but i still think like from that interaction with her like she sped up the time to like try to get shinji out of there because she Risco, Clear, yes. Clearly saw how much, you know, it means to Masato to get Shinji out of there. And it also does show, like, Ritsuko does kind of care. Yes. And she she even, like, she's always been kind of, like, I don't want to say rude, but maybe glib about the way she's talked about the kids before. Yes. But in, like, this episode, she's like, oh, wow, Shinji's really coming into his own lately. Like, he's yeah. really gained a lot of confidence, and he's good at his Ava now. Not even, even that, probably also just, like, he's probably the best pilot for Zero One. Like, there's no, like... There are like benefit, you know, it benefits her to get him out of there as well. Yeah, definitely. And but yeah, there's that, and then of course, like during the prep stuff, like Oscar's being very like 
antagonist of like fuck Shinji man we just let him drown in the void and just like he got himself into this like for being so cocky even though she did this and like yeah she Rey, like, set him up for it Ray's like fuck you like <laughs> well what Ray says I think is really interesting she she basically goes over and she's like why do you pilot the Ava is it for yeah. praise for others to praise you and Asuka says no I do it to praise myself but it's still like fucking like fuck you Asuka <laughs> yeah, she, I mean she certainly is like what, what's the word like she she's just demeans everyone around her yes. to like make herself feel better because she clearly has like a what, she makes everybody else feel like shit or like has something like, you make them and but yeah and like, makes... she has unresolved issues that she can't deal with so she's projecting it on everyone else yeah and i i really love that ray stands up for shinji yeah here. like it just shows like ray is really growing as like a human <laughs> like she's finally becoming a human <laughs> she's getting emotion yeah. now, which is crazy it's just like uh, my favorite uh i i guess from persona 3 yes which certainly was a ray reference i could definitely see that <laughs> They're both i do robot. love that trope i love the trope of uh of, the um, robotic humanoid yeah ga- gaining like emotion yes it's the best like pinocchio <laughs> <laughs> all three of them together <laughs> death but. battle <laughs> shut up pinocchio turns into monstro and pinocchio is like final smash. power level all, all right. right we need to not talk about that ever again <laughs> so um but yeah d- so in there while while they're still trying to like to prep get everything ready is we get the like, shinji kind of like the 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 what's it called the the system is going down like the, the water is being like so yeah the filtration stops working in in his so the lcl is what they are always in yes. which which I don't know if they've described what LCL is. No, I'm pretty really. sure you don't find out till the very end. So they've talked about it kind of it, being blood-like before. Yes, but this now the filtration systems aren't working. So and it's all dark and murky. And Shinji says, "Oh my god, this this is literally like he starts blood. Ga- he gags on it for like a second there. Yeah, and he's he's basically in horrible torture. Like Shinji just goes through like the most horrific experience where you're just locked in. He turns the Ava on for a second and he's literally in just a total huge he's void. He's in white, a white void instead of a black void. And he says that it's so big that even like the sonar systems in the, in the Ava can't, they are the, the, like they aren't bouncing back. So there's nothing out there. It's just like this, the waves are just going out. Yes. Um, but he kind of has like a, I guess like a internal crisis, I guess and that's the way to describe it, or just like, yeah, he definitely has like a psychological breakdown. <laughs> yes, and this is where I, I kind of get predictions of like what happened with the backstory with some of the visuals in it. I'm not, like, I'm not sure you want me to like just go go with what I got from everything. No, uh, go for it. So a lot of stuff is like you know with like Gendo and and his mother stuff. Obviously, it, it feels like I'm gonna, I'm going to guess that his mother was like the original pilot for Zero One, and this is highly why. I, the children have to pilot it because I guess she died or like, like either hybrided or like synced up or like kind of like because she kind of like melted into the this, this system. That's why she died. Because there are things of like people blaming Gendo for her death, and they say it was an yes. accident, and like, but then that's probably what it was. Was that whatever testing that happened? Because that's in two thousand four. So this is like after yes. third impact. Or yeah. S- sorry, second impact. Yes. So I'm guessing she like merged with like the Ava One at some point, and then she disappeared, and that's why, that's why he went. You know, he probably fucked off with that. But like, that's why he cloned Ray. I'm because I still, I still like the one thing I know. Like, and that's why he wanted to make Ray. Maybe Ray was like going to be the original Pyro with Zero One, but it didn't sync up for whatever reason. And that's why he, you know, obviously why he did that and to try to get her again. But yeah, that's why I think that's why her her coming out of like the Ava or like that's why they broke out at that point because that's so, what yeah, it seemed like cause it, looked, it looked like a very adult Ray with like the hairstyle at least. So yeah, that's kind of the ending. That's like the 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 climax of of Shinji getting out. But like just like okay, great theories. I love hearing it. I won't comment because <laughs> you don't have to. obviously. But um, I do want to say I think you're onto something. <laughs> um no that's it it's very obvious but like it's <laughs> a lot of it but um but yeah so he even says mother like he yes. uh, shinji identifies this figure as his mother yes but so shinji has like the psychological break and he first he imagines just kind of like lines on the screen and it's kind of clever because it it's essentially shinji having a conversation with himself yes and it's represented by like a younger version of himself yes. which is like the we day also, where he was abandoned and we also yeah we see the child shinji with the briefcase of like gendo walking away which is that we you, you assume it more of like yeah him him being abandoned by Gendo because probably you know, at that point reminds him of his mother or something like I can't have any visual mm. <laughs> reminders of her. 
Yeah, or, which is that's a thing he explicitly said like two episodes ago. Yes, about how he destroyed like every photo of her and. Uh, uh, but so, uh, what I wanted to say here that I one thing that's really important that I I think is like one of the things people take away the most from this show is the idea that so Shinji's talking to himself, which yes. This could be... They also mention... I said, it also kind of goes with... Because they say the angel is like a multi... Could be from a different dimension or like a different like... It's a multiverse kind of like mm-hmm. thing. And it kind of goes into Shinji's crisis thing where he talked about like Shinji's from other worlds. like. Okay, so yeah, that's what I want to talk about. Yes, so, that's what I said. I, try, I know um, you're going to go into that. So I can mention... Well, so yeah, I, I have to kind of posit the idea of like... Do we think that the angel is communicating with Shinji here? Like, do we, do we they, think they that do, this other Shinji is actually the angel? They do mention that it was trying to uh, assimilate with the with the Ava. Yeah. And, like, maybe because it, it could have been, but it also could maybe it affected the Ava. So, like, the mother that, like, hybrid was, like, trying to have a way to, like, talk to Shinji about every Because even, uh, like, a way to tr- maybe trigger it out to, like, get to Shinji. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, it but, seemed like a very, very much like that. But so... Uh... The main takeaways here, the one thing that I think is like the biggest thing people take from the series is this idea of, I call, I wrote many Shinji's theory. The, That's a stupid way of writing it. The multiverse of Shinji's. <laughs> but essentially what, what this conversation is getting down to is like, there's essentially two versions of you. Uh, there's the you that you know, because you're the only person that can know yourself. And this is something Kaji says in the next episode. Mm-hmm. Kaji explicitly says like, like you can only really know who you are. You'll never know who other people are because yeah. we just can't connect that way. And basically, there's there's you, and then there's the version of you in someone else's mind. Yes. So like the you inside like Masato's heart or Asuka's heart or yeah. Ray's heart is, 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 is which is essentially the way I interpret it is like that's the way that they perceive you. So like yes, the way like that a... I am is not the way that you see me. Y- yes. The Jim and Sam's head is not the Jim and Jim's head. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's obviously like how others view of you. Like that's like there's always is that like thing of like. How you want people to think of you in a certain way, so you act like or, or differently around them. Yeah. But then once you see you how you are like by yourself, you can see you be a hundred percent different person. That's how like a lot. There's a lot of cases of that. Like like have have a serial killers are like that in in, in the world. Where <laughs> yeah. like yeah, they people see him as one, but like oh, I would never have known. And then by themselves, they're a fucking monster. Like mm-hmm. like <laughs> it's not it's not a new new thing. And I think um, what she, a lot of people that watch this when they were like teenagers, they say this was like. This is their first realization to that, which I think is kind of funny. I mean, I'm not not yeah. knocking it. I think it is a really interesting oh, way yeah. of thinking. But like, but like, Shinji, Shinji wants everybody to see him as like a competent, like, I guess like soldier or like competent, just like asset. Yeah. But like by himself, he is like not view himself as that really. Like he's kind of like he is like <laughs> many mental issues of like abandonment and like all that, even. Mm-hmm. and just like you know <laughs> the one thing that uh also that i really relate to honestly is the 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 other shinji the younger shinji says um because they they start going through like why shinji behaves the way he does and they mention the the gendo praising him scene from yes. the, the one episode and the like paraphrasing basically says like oh you're gonna hang on to that little bit of happiness that you had have and like nurture it for the rest of your life like essentially you, Rather than try and like move on to you're, new you're experiences, going, you're gonna hang on to that one compliment that yeah, you got. You're, you're gonna live on for that one little thing you got, that one scrap, and never like get off. No matter exactly. how how worn out it gets, he's just gonna be stuck with it. No matter how much he hates piloting the Ava, because clearly this is horrible. It, it was the only thing that got him to get that praise. Exactly. Yeah. And him, as we've seen, him just got gonna get it like on the ground, like like. Even like the close conversation we got on the ground, which is about his mother, and that was like no praise from him. It was just about the, his mother. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. So oh, we didn't. So one thing we didn't really talk about the plan. The plan that they were going yes. to bring Shinji out was they were going to literally drop every single fucking N two mine, <laughs> every mine. big nuke, literally like nine hundred ninety eight of them or something, or nine hundred ninety two, and then try and use both of the uh, other Ava's AT fields to like bring the yes. the Ava because the shadow itself. The shadow on the ground is the uh, is the body, yeah. and the and the and the orb is a is the the sh- like the shadow of it. Mm-hmm. And but we see some there's some and during the fight that we see like cool things like Asuka using the axe as like a like a step. Oh yeah, yeah. Asuka has like an inexplicable axe. I don't think she ever uses ever again. <laughs> Sad. Um, and we use as a step, not a weapon. Yeah. And she uses that, and also she takes a progressive knife out. With those yes. things are expensive. I guess and so. And she just fucking lets those things go. And uh, Ray had like a sniper that she, I like her leaning against the building to for like recoil essentially. Yeah, it's it's really cool. But but yeah, but as we see, like when we see, like, I guess the the mother, 
the mother looked like an angel, essentially, like, like a spirit angel, and like basically like caused. I, I'm assuming it caused it to go berserk, very similar to the first episode. Something triggered it and mm. busts out like, like it like rips, rips yeah, it, rips the the shadow, the shadow itself, not the body, but comes out of the shadow orb because I guess it's just better for presentation wise and like image wise. It comes out like a berserk style. And part of it, so I they don't really explicitly talk about it in the episode, no. but um. So and people are horrified. Like this is like what the fuck are these Avas? Like honestly, like this is fucking horrifying. So yeah, um, Ritsko figures out kind of what it is. Like this is like I just want to read what she says. Yeah, go it's, ahead. It's funny. So she says it's six hundred and eighty meters in diameter with a thickness of three nanometers. The ultra thin space is supported by an inwardly directed AT field. The inside is an imaginary space called the Sea of D- Dirac. It's probably uh, a Bible thing. I think it's probably connected to another universe. So they don't exactly know what it is, but the idea that it's like... You got that on observ- observation alone. <laughs> yeah. And that it's like super thin. I think like the fan the fans have talked about it like potentially being like a fourth dimensional it creature. Seemed, it seemed like purgatory. Yeah. I Yeah. From like a... Like a white a void purgatory. Makes, I see it like. Um, but so like I, I think uh, the idea of thinking of it as like a, th- a fourth dimensional creature is interesting because if you think about like how like a fourth dimensional creature would potentially cast a three dimensional shadow. You know what I mean? Cause think about if you're, there's a whole like uh thought experiment about like called flatland. Mm-hmm. Like imagine that you're like a little like two dimensional guy in flatland. Okay. So you only see in two dimensions. One day a child in the third dimension throws a ball and a ball passes through flatland. Hmm. How would like, so a three dimensional ball goes through two dimensional world it wouldn't look like a ball. It would look no. like a line. It would look like mm. a like a, a straight line that just appears and disappears. Mm. So I think it's really interesting to imagine what would a fourth dimensional creature, what kind of shadow would that cast in the third dimension? I just, I really love this idea. They don't explicitly say no. it, but I think it's kind if of you got, If you get the big brain, I could see a lot of like discussion about that where my pea brain is going to be like, I'm going to view it as purgatory and like Shinji is like in this in the middle ground, whether he wants like to live or he's gonna die and like pass on, but his mother being the angel just like, gonna be like, "You're gonna live on." That's why I'm putting you back into the real world, like kind of thing. Yeah, and she like s- creates some sort of crazy energy that's able to like, either rip out of that or the uh, trigger purgatory. the trigger the underneath like the berserk kind of thing. Because the only time we ever see berserk is when like, when the launch goes away. But Shinji's the only time where it kind of goes berserk like mid fight. Mm. Like we don't see that with Asuka. Like almost like, Ray's only going berserk when. The, the when launch. she wasn't even in it, yeah, yeah. The, the in it, was, yeah, and that thing happened with three, where like the launch goes wrong. So that's just how my pea brain view. Also, it. it's kind of interesting to think about. So Shinji does get sucked into the shadow on the ground, yes, but he comes out of the three dimensional. Yes, I mentioned that, like he comes yeah. out of the ball, which, which is supposed is, to be the shadow. Yeah, so I don't know. I think it's really interesting. Um, but and yeah, we, uh, they get Shinji. They go. Uh, what's called Masato like cries and hugs him. I like. I kind of really love that moment of her like crying. Yes. Happy. I was gonna be like, "Aren't you supposed to be mad at him?" And she'd be like, "No, just fucking happy that he's alive." And like, I kind of like. I love that a lot. Yeah, that that moment is really like kind of just shows how like vulnerable Misato is because Misato always puts us this like front of we, being yeah, serious. We, well, we saw that when she was getting drunken, carried home. Yes. Like that's like seeing like, you know, the, seeing her being the human that she is. Yeah. Misato is fantastic. He's great. My favorite character in this. Also, uh, Dirac C is actually a real scientific term. Dirac C. It's basically the, the, you... the idea of a theoretical model where oh. a vacuum has an infinite sea of particles I can't explain this. Uh, <laughs> it was invented by some guy in the 30s. Sounds about right. Um, but yeah, some I just, guy really high off of opium. Uh, <laughs> probably. He's British, so possibly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that really good. Oh, and also, we, we, um, Shin- Shinji's world famous hospital bed. Yeah, and Ray is waiting yeah. for him. Ray is sitting next to him, which is like, and I guess she can like say, "Oh, she was there for whatever." But she like. That is a like crazy character growth. Yeah, I, for we see well, the evolution of, of uh, Shinji's hospital bed of no one being there when when he wakes up to having like Ray being there for him and then Asuka like outside the door. Yeah, Asuka begrudgingly like outside as well. But yeah, it's re- I really like seeing Ray there. Like, it's... I think I finally realized like why this series I love this series so much because like it just has so much complexity to how it builds out like its characters and 
all the elements like the whole idea of the I, angels I, like getting smarter and trying to like probe humans yes like communicate with humans but they never work together the angels they're, yeah they're always isolated yes also but also seeing like ray getting slow character growth is perfect for her because i don't think you could get a rapid character growth from ray you have to you have to build it up with like an emotionless yeah. uh golem of a creature <laughs> of a clone <laughs> test tube baby oh yeah also um i don't know if it was in i think it was this episode uh, maybe it was the next one um, we've seen Ray inside her little. This is the next episode. We see Ray in the tube again, which that confirms that is our Ray. That's not yes. like a different clone <laughs> Ray or something. Not but... the hundred rays we saw in the the one episode, but like the the <laughs> the, the existential crisis Ray, the tessellated or whatever. <laughs> um, but so yeah, that's really that episode. Uh, also, there is one line because like we have this idea of Misato starting to distrust Ritsuko about like the Ava stuff. And she she really layers into it with with, with Risco. Yeah. Um but it's funny though cuz in the next two episodes she is like relieved that Risco is okay. Yeah. Um, which I guess cuz they're friends but Yeah. She her she knows she's high and shit but she still doesn't want her to die. That's true. I guess you can have that feeling. She's also a very important person to like she's probably the most important scientist for nerve, so. Mhm. And so yeah the one thing here was she was like uh what did like uh misato hears ritsuko say like what the hell did we copy when they're seeing like the carnage that ava's ava unit one is doing yes they're basically like okay well there's there's more to like oh what is the is a copy of misato has already seen uh the the thing under nerve and what is yes. it central dogma adam yes as it was uh, kaji called it adam after he called something else adam yes the briefcase was also adam yeah little little scamp that was fucking everybody's yeah, adam. that was basically i mean we talked about that episode a lot but that was like very important episode it's incredibly important it's kind of like a huge i mean that this is like really we're diving into shinji's yes. psyche now like we're finally we're finally here this is like peak ava i think yes <laughs> and then the next two episodes are like a very two-part and very like very linked together yeah so i think it makes sense to just talk about them yes as one rather than what? super separate but the big thing here and it's kind of like a little unclear at first the second branch of Nerve, which was in Nevada, is just explodes inexplicably. Yes, uh, very much like where they tested a lot of nu- nuclear weapons, and uh, what's it called? Uh, it di- say Unit Four disappeared. Yes, and they're just sending over Unit Three, just like we, we, we don't want to deal with this shit anymore. <laughs> so yeah, presumably Unit Four like exploded. They, there's a lot of talk in these episodes about this thing called an S two engine. Mm-hmm. So they they talk about how. Like they have a bunch of data about the angels in S two, but that's safely in the Germany branch. I guess that's the third branch, maybe. I'm assuming, yeah. Um, but the American branch, they had this. They had two Avas. They had a unit through zero three and unit zero four, and then unit zero four just exploded because yes, presumably it, we're doing tests with this S two engine. He's killed like everybody who was at the test site, essentially. Yeah, literally thousands of people just wiped out in a second. Um, so that's kind of setting up like, oh, there's like bad stuff going on. Yes. And yeah, they're just sh- shifting over to unit three. They don't want, they're not our problem anymore. And essentially, essentially they keep talking about, okay, we got to, they ha- they're sending a pilot over or they're have a pilot select. They're saying, we're set, they're sending a pilot over from the Institute, but as we learn, there is no Institute. Yeah. We, and we kind of see that happen initially too. So there's a scene where Ritsuko, Gendo and Ray are kind of all plotting. Ray's not really plotting. She's just there for the ride. She She's there for she the could, company. She couldn't plot if she tried. No. Um, but they're plotting about um, various things. And they the one thing is the dummy plug. Yes. The um, dummy plug is very important, which I kind of knowing where that's going to go, because I've seen the mass production Avas before, because I, I want to build a model kit of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love the mass production And Avas. I'm like, it's obviously a, the dummy plugs go <laughs> involved with that, because how else would you use a dummy for, for a mass production of Avas? true uh maybe uh no comment but so they they're essentially talking about like the dummy plug will work as like because i think ritz goes like but doesn't the ava need to synchronize with a person and he says as long as the the ava thinks that it's synchronizing with a person it works and we learned that the dummy pu- dummy plug is based off of ray's like brain waves but, but and I'm personality like, i'm like not a good choice for like, any of the pilots honestly for like the, the, the do a sync or have the their, their conscious like their conscious like like uh it's into a could you imagine AI. the oscar dummy plug it would just be the most Unhinged. unpredictable any of the people in the show would, <laughs> are horrible choices yeah it's like maybe they shouldn't be doing what they're doing maybe they shouldn't force <laughs> children to do this the cockpit's too big for a grown-up jim <laughs> 
Um, also, we have this one little shot where I just want to point it out. Um, Gendo and Ray are kind of having a bonding moment, and Ritsuko does not look very happy about that. <laughs> Stranger day. You can fucking sex pest men. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, this... It's called Masato's going away, essentially, which we learn is going to be like the test site for three. I love her outfit with her beret. I, lo- I love I love Masato's yeah. outfits. That's that's the next episode. Just before we do that, the one. Okay, there's a, there's a, I'm sorry. A lot of these things kind of like. Yeah. Blend. The one thing I just want to point out, as we already mentioned, like Kaji does meet with Misato kind of in secret. Yes. And he, he explains like Look up there's the, there's no Marduk Institute. There's no Institute. Look up 707, which is the school they go to. So essentially, the Institute is the public school that Shinji goes to. Essentially. Yeah. And they another character mentions how like they keep the pilots in in close proximity. So presumably. All of the kids at yes. that school could be potential Ava class pilots. Prez, c- class Prez, class <laughs> rep could be. Hikari, yes, class rep, my favorite character. Could be a pilot. Um, which I think is really interesting. Also, it's very funny. We get a lot of shots I- of them in class. They seem to get the same fucking lesson every day about the second impact. The, the second impact is very, like, the, is literally the most, like, it's, two, it's like two sentences about the history of the second impact. Yeah. Just how and, all is horrible, but we came back. But we have, like, Toji comes missing so often, and Ray's also missing. Like, they have to go deliver, like, the study guides to Ray. But class friend's like, oh, yeah, Toji, it's your turn to deliver. Like, someone can go with you to a girl, to this, you know, female student's class. And like, oh, and I know who. Like, Shinji, you're coming with me. Yeah, class rep is like, oh, Haka. And he's like, no, Shinji. And the, the, thought, <laughs> thought be gone. <laughs> thought be gone. What's a woman? Uh, but yeah, I love the scene where they go to Ray's house because Shinji's like, "Hey, I like, know the drill." <laughs> yeah, like we can just go inside. <laughs> she will not give a shit because <laughs> it seems like her her buzzer doesn't even work. Uh, but yeah, Shinji's like being the the nice kind boy he is. He straightens up her room, and then when Ray Don- comes doesn't touch back, the glasses. <laughs> yeah, he does. He knows not to. Um, but when Ray comes back, also I love the interaction of. He, he's just like hey we let ourselves in she's like why because <laughs> <laughs> we had to deliver <laughs> like study guys whatever he's like oh okay but then when shinji says hey i cleaned up for you ray like blushes i know ray ray is like extremely uncomfortable Somewhat... but like not in like uncom- a good way I, yeah she's... i would say she's just this is not something like she's not used to getting kindness like kindness someone helping her out like because last time we were there it was just bugging a bandage pile, a bloody bandage pile. <laughs> yeah, her, her her sheets were all stained with her blood oh. too. Uh, but yeah, no, she's like she's completely like thrown off. And then she even says like uh, "arigato." Thank you. Uh, and she, later on, she's like, it's kind of almost like a, a very like teen relatable moment where she's like like laying to herself. She's like, hmm, "I said thank you to him. Oh, I never done that. I've never said those <laughs> words to him before. I don't even know what it means." <laughs> But it's just, I don't know, like, we're getting, like, the slow drip of Ray just finally, like, opening up. And, yes. like, having connections with other humans. Yes. We see it more than once with different humans. It's beautiful. Great. She's like a little flower. It's <laughs> finally blooming. Oh, uh, man. I hope it doesn't go horribly wrong. <laughs> uh, but so. We all know when love gets introduced inside her dummy plug, it's going to go haywire. <laughs> <laughs> love in the dummy plug. No! <laughs> um. We have another scene where uh, Gendo basically, Gendo and Fiyutsuki, Fiyutsuki is his second in command. Yes. They're on like a cool train. We get a cool shot of the city, like a cool parallax shot, whatever. I like that. But he mentions that all they need, Gendo says, all we need are Tokyo 3 and Unit 1. I don't care that we literally had like a whole nerve branch exploded for no reason. It doesn't fuck, fucking matter. Fuck the Germans. We don't care. Like literally just Unit 1 and, and Tokyo 3, all we fucking need. Yes. Um, Interesting. Menacing. But and they also make a reference to how Tokyo Three is constructions finally finished. Yes, like, they were in the final stage. Now it's I'm, done. I'm guessing the city that sunk a little bit into the shadow is this fine. There were like dozens of buildings, but half the buildings. I don't think they came back. But half those buildings are just like an armory Ava support. Yeah, Ava, it's literally Ava armory. I guess the city sunk already beforehand. Yeah, but so they've lost, they lost like billions of dollars in like weapons. <laughs> Millions dead. Uh, <laughs> but um yeah this is we we actually get a, a we get one of those scenes i love scenes oh. what that's because like it, we, what's it called we did also the at the vending machine you know, after yeah, walks, okay i'm gonna go to that but like uh kaji has a con- well it was weird at first cause he's just like hey shinji sh- here, share a drink with me and he's like but you're a grown man i'm like that's weird thing to say shinji and he says but i'm a guy that's what i'm shinji a guy said. no what i was gonna say i i love <laughs> scenes like the the vending machine scene where 
characters kind of cycle in and out. Like it starts out with yeah, Kenji, or Kaji, Kaji, Kaji and the Maya. Yeah, yes. Who's the, she's like the girl nerve commander lady. One, one of the three tech people we always yeah. see. And he's like trying to seduce her, and it's very uncomfortable. I'm assuming she's like, not interested. I'm, yeah, I'm, well, no, she's she's. She seems not interested, but she also seems like she will get easily seduced if it went on for a little bit. She probably, yeah. I mean, she seems kind of young. Yeah, I mean, but like, but Kaji seems to be now like you get it, he's using it more for info. That's true. Yeah, Kaji was, is definitely doing it for info, but it's still like it's still a questionable because, method. <laughs> because yeah, because uh, Risco probably either she knows she either knows or she like doesn't like he knows he's a spy or she's just like maybe she doesn't know. But he did the the flirting thing with her for like info and everything. Cause now Masato knows he can like doesn't do nearly as much as the hitting on her. Yeah, well, it seems like now that that's that, kind of passed. Like, yeah, that to him that was probably part of his goal too, is to just get um, use Masato. Yeah, when he you know, getting with Masato, he know that would like put her off guard, and also he could get info from her. Like, he knows that that was like. But I think once they had the heart to heart, and like that she knows now, like I feel like yeah, he do- he doesn't try to hit on her anymore. Yeah, and so their big thing here is where he he talks about the whole like. Uh, there's no Marduk Institute, and then Shinji comes in. Yeah, and then sorry to cock block you. Yeah, but then <laughs> we have my my incredibly favorite thing. Man, we finally see Kaji's watermelons. Man, the watermelon. Kaji's watermelons. I, I love his water. Like the fact that this man who is like he's has like two jobs. He fakes like he's literally a spy. He's like double. What do they call that? Du- the uh, he's a double agent yes. essentially. And he still has time to plant and nurture his watermelons in some random field in the geo front. It's hilarious. He still had and and the babysit uh, Asuka for also as like he had a job yeah. as well for that. But I I just also love like this is like an incredibly important scene because Shinji doesn't really interact with Kaji too much and no. we had a lot of that in these two episodes. All 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 the interactions are like off of Masato. Like he learns about him through Masato essentially. Yeah, and I was surprised at how quick the scene was. I. I always think about Kaji's watermelons as like this really important thing, but maybe I'm just imagining. I also, like, Jim's like, as a gardener, as a gardener, I as also gardener. do love that there's a, a fun little like horticultural aspect to the series. And it's, it's also like a hobby that this character that like a spy and works for Nerve as well, like just does on the off time, is, which is like interesting to see like what characters do when they're not working. Yeah, it basically just shows like that there's a whole side of Kaji that we don't even know about. Going yeah. back to the whole idea of like. You have a, a like a person that exists in your head, gonna, is not the same one. I was gonna say like there's the Kaji that like you know that he knows who he is, and then what everybody else, which is like the womanizer, yeah. like weird weird guy who's always late. Yeah, well he's he's very busy, Sam. He's very busy. Yeah, he's a lot on his plate. But one thing he says here that is actually interesting too, because he's kind of connecting to Shinji, is the idea that like people who have been hurt tend to be kind. Uh, yes but people who are weak and like are constantly victim of aren't necessarily capable of that kind of Hmm. behavior so he's kind of i guess he's acknowledging to shinji that he knows that shinji's experienced trauma yeah uh, because he certainly has Hmm. Uh, yeah a little bit (laughs) it's it's got only to increase more and more now after the end of the uh, the last episode ends but but yeah, it's a nice like, like little conversation. I like, like seeing characters who don't interact often interact. Like we see that with more when we get to like Ray. But a lot, so a lot of the sub subplot is like waiting on the, who the pilot is. Who's the pilot of Unit Zero Three? I, I, I know. I feel like oh, we're introduced to the white haired boy, Jinji's boyfriend that I know about. But no, this is a different one. And but, but we see. Uh, it's so funny. You kept saying that, and I was like, oh my god, is Sam gonna like not realize it's Toji? I it's very obvious when he heard a point. I'm like, damn. It's... Once they hit like the, the end of the, the first episode of it, you're like, okay, it's it's clearly yeah. Toji. Because he has that like great scene where he's like at playing basketball by himself and he, he, he gets a slam dunk. He doesn't get a slam and dunk. Especially with the line of like, oh, the pilot made a deal for the sister. Yeah. And like you know, he said there's no one able to make. You know, no one's able to make food for my home because I feel like, like, oh, parents could be either are dead or they're all constantly working. Parents are probably like killed by an angel Ava fight or something. I can see that being collateral damage from some point. But, but yeah, and they, oh, the, the other big thing too that we kind of talked about, you mentioned it, is like class rep talking about like making him food and that's like a big. She worries about him. Yeah. Like, she's like kind of. It, it's pretty smart to use her this way because it gives another connection that isn't just Shinji. Like, yes. It just shows that other people care for Toji. Yes. And also, so, like, you know something wrong with him? Like, she, you can kind of see because he's late constantly. 
like he's been looking depressed and like she like, he's, he's like, staying oh. he's staying in class super he, late he like. always eats junk food like and she kind of notices that like okay and she kind of t- she kind of talks to him like i have all this leftover food like it's such a cute like yeah she, it's she, a weird way to ask him out on yeah. a way but not doing it by saying hey you want to go out yeah she's like oh there's always so much leftover food when i make lunch it's a great and he's like i guess i could help you with that and she's like oh great that's awesome like it's just it's funny it's very like middle school yes like, they're too afraid to actually like admit their emotions to each other yeah i mean and we kind of get more extended with that with like when Aka talks to her and ray yeah. talks to him which i really like that we get that perspective too the the fact that we get more of her because they could just have used her for that scene ha- and that having it, character- we get a lot of her having characters interact with like other people that are not you know that they know class supposed to be friends with oscar but like you kind of actually get that of like it's they just, have like a rapport, like yes. they have like a way they behave with each other. I, I think it's like the second episode is when they talk, though, right? Yeah, that was like. Half I kind of want to talk about that scene, but was, well, we can we can get there later. But but yeah, the basic episode ends like her cooking the the lunch and uh, him playing basketball by himself, kind of like that. It's kind of a con- contemplation thing of like maybe someone like bouncing like a tennis ball off like a wall, the kind of just like someone someone doing an activity alone, and you kind of that's like what you do when you're in like or conflicted. You don't know what to do. Yeah, he's in his own head. He probably seen like what Shinji has gone through and like reacted as well. Like this is probably gonna shit I have to deal with. Like he's he's met the three people that are in this program. Yeah, like and they're fucked. <laughs> and also, I think it's important that like his first reaction to the Avas was extremely negative. Yes, because it was his sister literally getting like hospitalized. Yes. So now he's in that position, and he even has like a flashback moment where he remembers punching Shinji, and he's kind of reflecting like oh, well, I'm going to be in Shinji's position now. Like, yeah. It's it's a whole, like, coming full circle. And it's, Ava is just so good. It's so well written that, like, you can take a, a side character like Toji and give him that, like, full focus yes. for, like, a scene or two. And that's all you need. It, and we also have, like, the the other friend just being, like, the bl- this the dark web knowledge of, like, learning yeah, all the information all the, brokers. He's got all the rumors, yeah. Oh, yeah, that actually happened in the last episode. We didn't talk about that. But um, he... Maybe Shinji he, he, learns everything through yeah, him. Yeah, basically. And it's so annoying. And it's funny because, like, having worked, like, a job, having worked many jobs, there is a lot of times where you just don't know what's happening like, yeah. um, in the in your office. Yeah, like, you don't know about the explosion that happened yeah. in America? You don't know about, like, like Ava 3 coming here? Shinji and Misato, like, barely know about that. And, like, Shinji's like, hey, there's rumors about this. And Misato should have been like, what the fuck? Where'd you hear those fucking rumors? Like, that's more than I know. Internet. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh... But yeah, so the next episode, we can go this one through this one kind of more quickly. Yeah. I think. Like, so the big thing is it, it begins with really good English speaking. Yes, actual American is fa- found. Literally, like. some of the best English speaking I've ever heard in an anime. Yeah, surprisingly, because uh, it's supposed to be the launch. They're they're launching um, it, the unit eight... three to from Nevada to uh, Japan. Yeah, on a cross. On, of course, on a cross. How else would you? carrying it <laughs> symbolic it is a symbolic shinji it's funny because when they put oscars on the boat they literally just like pinned it down like <laughs> they didn't put it on a big cross or anything all gonna be- well we had we've had a robot for sea air and land with the one that broke out from the the, the one like oh we're gonna make our own avas that's true that's that true. was land so <laughs> we've done all now we need uh what land sea space we need the space angel or the space we had a space angel i mean the space ava space ava space ava hmm the Ava from Mars or the moon? The Ava from the moon. The dark side of the moon. There we go. Hey, the moon's been sh- symbolic. There we go. But uh, um, but yeah, we get, we get a lot more like stuff like Toji obviously like conflicted stuff with like cause he goes to like the roof to like kind of do also to think about because that's also where a lot of Japanese teenagers go to think is on the roof of their high school. Of course, yeah. They have access to, and that's when Ray. And Ray approaches him. Yes. So yeah, the big thing we haven't mentioned is everybody fucking knows who is the next child tri- that Toji's a pilot except, except for Shinji. Shinji. No Shinji's one told the him. only one. So no one, no one had the heart to really tell Shinji. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Ray kind of has like a conversation with him, which is wild to see. And just like, of course, in viewing distance of class prez, by the way. And basically, like, he, I think he like tell if I remember correctly, he like he tells her that like he like she obviously like likes Shinji. Yeah, he kind of brings it up to her that oh, you care about Shinji. Yeah, because like, I think he he was kind of saying like oh, you're concerned about how this is gonna affect Shinji. Yeah, and she like you kind of is taken aback, but she's like yeah, you're caring about Shinji's mental health. And then like take that class prez sees him and Aka's like he's like oh, I think 
I think Ray likes him or something. Like, she's like, <laughs> no way. Like, she can't even, she couldn't like anybody if she tried. Yeah, I think she says yeah, that. Nothing he... to, we literally have nothing to worry about. There, it's literally impossible. Yeah. Which is uh, kind of nice. Like, you have this 100%. You got that dick. You like, got it. Like, <laughs> literally, no, no other female cares about Toji. <laughs> like, you're fine, Hikari. You have it. Hikari is the class rep's name. Um, <laughs> so, what else happened? Oh, uh, Kaji babysitting. I like Ka- yes. Kaji babysitting Mas- them. Because Masato goes away. Yeah, so she they go away far. I guess like they probably do it for safety reasons. Yes, they go far away to, to like do the Ava test, test. site. And it's then... also cool. It gives us a different like fight arena for like the final act. Yes. Um. And yeah, Kaji's babysitting the two, <laughs> which is interesting. So this is when Asuka finds out Shinji doesn't know, and Asuka plays dumb. Like she pretends to not know who Asuka the pilot is. Asuka continues to be a horrible person. Yeah, Asuka. Oh, uh, unless she also doesn't want to have the heart to tell him who it is. That's interesting. That's really interesting because I could see it going either way. Yes, uh, same. We didn't talk about it, but Asuka has been like extremely like well, more she, aggressive yes, lately. Because she walks in like I think earlier, maybe the episode before, where she walks into the Kaji yeah, like on a computer. And she like basically forced like jumps on him and then sees on the computer who the pilot is. Yeah, and then uh, he, Kaji's also like, "Get the fuck out of my office! Like, I don't have time for you right now." <laughs> no fucking. Um, but one thing that I really like, so yeah, we've we've seen Asuka like getting more and more aggressive. She she at first it was like she was kind of playful, but now she like gets actively angry when she yeah. has to deal. You're gonna be jealous when she finds out he's sleeping with Shinji. <laughs> uh, I think she like intentionally leaves before misato in the morning so yeah she, she does because and... they wake up like hey where is she is uh, she wait early because like when uh his one other friend comes in there like oh make me the test pilot yeah and uh i forget his M- name misato uh what's his name uh kai the kensuke kensuke um but uh yeah and misato's like shocked so she's like how do you even <laughs> fucking know about this how you know about this shit shinji shut the fuck up <laughs> but she is uh oh but so it's one line that misato has i like where she's like ah shinji you don't understand how girls work because like asuka's totally jealous uh well no asuka's av- avoiding misato well, yeah the avoiding misato, yeah, she, yeah she's jealous and just avoiding her because of the thing the, col- the perfume smell all of yeah everything's kind of like culminating yes um but so yeah, Kaji. So yeah, what I wanted to originally go to, um, in the scene where Kaji's babysitting Asuka and Shinji, he's, uh, she's even like, ah, oh, Kaji, I want to be all bubbly and happy like I normally am, but I just can't bring myself to it. Which I think is really funny because like you're never bubbly. Well, she oh, she you, is when you, she's you're, with you're, Kaji. You're, you're fake bubbly. I think that's pity on an act yeah. bubbly. So it's interesting that she's like, like we were talking about Ray's development. Asuka's development, I think, is equally as like interesting and well done like she has slowly become like more like i would say like negative like more spiteful <laughs> she's she, she's in major toxic she's like. extremely toxic yeah <laughs> she's literally i'm gonna become so toxic right now <laughs> i'm gonna become the most toxic 14 year old in the whole universe <laughs> red haired <laughs> give gingers a bad name <laughs> um but yeah and uh yeah. Then him and uh, Shinji and Kaji have like a really nice little conversation too uh, yes. when they're going to sleep about this kind of goes back to the whole um, how many or how many Shinjis there are in the universe. Yes. Infinite. If there's yeah, infinite we, people. It, it's basically, yeah, there's a conversation of, of like that of just being like, because he's like, because he always, he asks like, what's my dad like? Yeah. And it's like, you always ought to ask about your dad, like from other people about how your dad is. And then he says, I'd like to meet that dad. Do, 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 do. <laughs> But, like, yeah, Shinji should never think about his dad. <laughs> yeah, and this is when, this is actually when Kaji says, like, nobody can completely understand another person. But I love his outlook on it. He says, that's what makes life interesting. Yeah. Is that you can never understand everyone completely. Mm-hmm. Which is honestly a very, I like that way of looking at the world because yeah. it is true. Like, you will never understand even how like, people are. Even with through love, you never, like, can understand the person you're with, like, yeah. 100% like it's just not something that humans are capable of doing yeah at least currently like i said like i said like when he, like when he saw misato like when she was drunk kind of like pouring her heart out he really got that like side he never saw of her yeah and that kind of changed like his whole pursuit with her and like, that's why he he's like letting her like into like his sp- yeah. spy world i guess he he sees like w- where her like loyalties truly lie yeah he knows he can like knowing, trust her. knowing that she's not like deep into the nerve like 
shadowness. Yeah, he's shift, not, like shadiness. unlike Ritsuko, which Ritsuko is like in the deep state, she, like she, she a is, part of the deep state. She is there with like at the tube, at the secret tube, yeah, the secret ray tube. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, one of two secret ray tubes. One, one of tubes. One of tubes. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but uh, yes. And then we, pa- we basically get to the test site that goes obviously goes horribly wrong right away. Huge explosion explodes to a giant hole in the ground. I and- do want to say one thing. So there's a little bit of like speculation about where the angel came from. So remember in the very beginning when they take off, the airplane takes off, and there's lightning in the clouds. Oh, some people think that the angel was actually in the clouds. It's, and that's how it got into the Ava. <laughs> so this is very much like a. It feels like a like a symbiotic like po like goo. Yeah, it's like a goo angel. Yes, I'm not sure. Did you look up a name for it? Oh, I forgot to look it up. I think but, it's the thirteenth angel. Yeah, thirteenth angel. And it's like it's like a weird like parasitic like goo, but like cause like at one point it goes on the raised Ava and it like going to slowly take over yeah, into it's the trying to like assimilate or something. It's very or like very much like remember like how like parasite was where like the the other uh, one like uh parasite alien goes to his arm and he had to like go it off to like stop it from like going deeper yeah very much like <laughs> you have to stop this alien virus to go into you into your deeper in deeper so yeah it, it goes off on its own they just rule it like it's not an ava anymore it's an angel we have to take it out the pilot's still alive in there but we gotta take it out there's no way like <laughs> there's no other option and because masato's not there we and he can't contact anybody from the site uh gendo is put in charge of it yeah which is kind of like the big nail in the coffin <laughs> so, oh, this, fucks. so this one's called uh bardiel bardiel okay Bar- bardiel which is a hebrew name yeah and also ava 3 is, is like like a black design like black and gray mostly i guess yeah you only really get a really good look but you get a really cool shot of it walking like to the red moon like very very it's very menacing looking or red, red sun, sorry, not red moon. It's a great shot. The shot of him like approaching, and yeah, Ka- Toji has like no control over it, obviously, but he's trapped inside. Yes. Shinji still does not know it's in. He there. knows there's a human in there, but like he's like a, a child, a I boy can't... like me. Also, like, Aka yells at him and then jobs out by getting this the horror movie. Oh, I didn't like the Jurassic Park thing. I didn't hear the giant T Rex sneak up behind <laughs> me, and it knocks her out in like one punch. Ray gets her arm amped. The mech of her Ava, like, amputated yeah, because... Yeah, so Gendo for Because it's start, as you said, it's starting to get, like, infected. He, well, and, he had to... He probably had to, at least at that one, because... But he doesn't let them turn, like, the pain in- inhibitors on. Yeah. Probably, <laughs> so she feels like... She, she like, is taken out of commission because the pain is an injury is so bad. Yeah. But also, very interesting, the angel does not kill them. No, it The just angel walks, explicitly does not try it, and kill it just the went, other pilot. It just went to infect it, infect the mech. Yeah, but even that, it stopped and just went after Shinj. Yes, signing up with zero one, obviously, and then Shinji doesn't want to fight, and then Gendo evilly just like, okay, we're putting the dummy plug. That's not been tested yet. Nah, we're gonna put it on. It's breaking the glass. We're using case for emergency, but it's not an emergency. Nah, we're just doing it now. <laughs> we're doing it live. Yeah, and so Shinji's given like the horrible so, experience of having to like be there as and it and I'm guessing they seek they, Gendo probably knew Shinji would do this. Clearly, because they had the thing set up. Because so. yeah, it was already set up in his Ava alone, probably. Yeah, I guess we don't know if it's in all of them. Uh, presumably, it could be. But he probably knows Shinji would be the one to hold back and not yeah. do it. Well, I guess it could only potentially be in Ray's or in Unit Zero and One because we know yes. that There's... nobody else can sync with two. Except yeah, Alska. True. So I can see that being like okay, maybe Gendo sets this up perfectly to do to get Shinji to test out the dummy thing. Cause it's cause it wasn't really tested and it has been like not super reliable to do that. Yeah. So they just like, yeah. So it goes off and just like very like animalistically, like rips it apart, like crushes the head. Like there's just punching it nonstop. And it takes out the tube. Shinji's like saying like fucking stop this. And like, then it's, get it's it's like, over. It's like beat him. Yes. Yes. Like a sick freak. <laughs> I'm really into this. I'm really into this right um, now. And, and then, then yeah, it crushes it in his hand. But luckily, the fucking pilot's on the front of it, I guess, where he didn't break it. Well, he presumably is severely hurt, but yes. he's fine. He's fine. Everybody's been through horrible injuries. Look uh, at Ray <laughs> in the first episode. Yeah. One thing that I love, it's one of my favorite shots, is the the shot when Unit 1 like pushes its hand and crushes the head of Unit 3. Yes. And like you see for like one frame like the eyeball and the jaw, and then it cuts to... like. 
a huge wave of blood destroying like a building and a, it, a truck. It it's goes into so a truck. Cool. And the truck doesn't. I don't like, I'm not sure if it flips over, but you see the impact. Like it almost like flipped over or yeah. something. I love that. It's so cool. And it, I don't want to bring up the Mega sixty four uh, Ava video too much because like I think about it all the time. But they recreate that shot perfectly. I can't wait to rewatch and, that. Yeah, it's gonna be really fun to rewatch that for you because you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I know all this now. <laughs> But, uh, but that, the, that shot they do it so perfect where they have like a little toy car and they have a wave of blood <laughs> hit it oh my god i was so happy they did that so you have shinji traumatized then you see even more traumatized when he sees sees his friend toji and friends like i can't wait to give him a snack of lunch and then they're like oof not gonna go well uh also so yeah misato comes to and hurry, so yeah, because she's yeah, part Masato, of Masato's, Masato's like was knocked out. She had like a head bandage. She seemed to be like probably like minor injuries, but like still kind of like or I guess medium injury where she's not like she's not dying. <laughs> yeah, and Risco apparently got off minor. Very but also, minor. Kaji Kaji's there, and he's like, "I'm happy that you're okay." Yeah, like Kaji's a bro. Ka- Kaji certified and, bro status, even and, though he's a sex pervert, <laughs> sex pest. <laughs> A spy persona as a sex fest. Yeah, he's very much kind of like a, a James Bond. He's like a like a sloppy Japanese James Bond. <laughs> yes, a sloppy James Bond. That's a perfect analogy. But and like, and I guess, I'm guessing he probably like told like, you know she probably wor- like worried now about Shinji because she she knows the pilot, so like you know now she has that guilt over her and like worried about Shinji's mental health now. Yeah, because he's fucked because he sees him. Yeah, and that's I she like interestingly blames herself too because she yes. had many opportunities to tell shinji that toji was a pilot but everybody didn't. did yeah <laughs> everyone did and they didn't because they know they know how shinji is <laughs> they know they knew that it would fuck him up and obviously he's not going to want to pilot the mech ne- like ava now because that his father just you basically forced his ava to do that yeah it's it's pretty rough wow my uh, dad's an asshole poor, poor shinji local assholes revealed to be an even bigger asshole <laughs> Oh, the next episode's so, so good. Yeah, overall, though, I fucking love these episodes a lot. Yeah, as I said, this is like peak Ava. Like, this is when shit gets so fucking good. Yeah. It's almost, like, sad to me that, like, it, the series gets so good near the end because I just want it to keep going. Yeah. But I mean, I'm I'm happy that Ava... Ava has a great ending, I have to say. But So we have three, I guess, taken out, I guess, smushed. But we have, like, Ava 4 that disappeared... Yeah, mysteriously. They keep saying delisted. Delisted, yeah. Which is like what happens when you take like a game when off get of white like hair, a, the Steam store. When or we get white haired boy to appear finally. One day, maybe. Ka- it was his name. Was a, it was a K. Kauru. Ka- Kauru. Kauru. And like I was asking, like in the rebuild, is is Mari's Ava like zero three or four at all? She might or be. Or she's zero five just for she like. She might be zero six or some bullshit. You'll see with the rebuilds, they start playing fast and loose with the shit. They they're not nearly as like meticulous as the original series is when it comes to like naming things and setting things up because it's kind of like it's a big r- reveal in the show where we're what episode 18 and a character's like oh they found the fourth child like that's like a big reveal like yeah it's big news and that also i don't know if i'm having like a mandela effect thing but this subtitle calls it the f- they keep saying each one is a f- the fourth children i know i hate the, that the first it's child not, the first we'll, children maybe we'll just refer to as child because it's just easier that's a, and maybe uh, all like the dubs or, and, or not the dubs the subs that i had watched before all in my rec- recollection said child like first child fourth child but maybe i'm i don't know maybe that's like a newer thing like a, a reda the resub thing whatever yeah because i know um uh what's it called gynax was kind of like picky maybe it wasn't actually gynax maybe it was probably kara at the time studio kara which is like ano's new ava studio yeah maybe they went and they were like okay we want x y and z uh for the subtitles because that was one of the reasons why uh the third rebuild movie didn't come out in a physical release was because they wanted to do the subtitles over it was weird we'll talk about that yeah when we when we watch that movie we'll talk about it but but yeah, I think this is probably my favorite like bunch of episodes that we've watched. It's really good. I have to say the next few are also going to be really kick-ass. Uh, I'm really interested to see how you'll feel about the final two episodes. Hmm. That's going to be the the big the big one. Interesting. Uh, we might need to watch a different version because this the so, there's a lot of on screen text. And this version doesn't seem to want to translate all the on screen text, which is weird. Hmm. We'll see. We'll we'll get there. We'll get there. 
But then we could watch the movie and Aveva, and then I'll I'll love that because I love that movie. I'm excited to watch them all. But... There's so many funny little memes that I want to share with you, but I can't. Like you I just saw the... hilarious. Like there's been so many like Breaking Bad memes that I cannot share with you because they're uh, Ava spoilers. But we'll get there. Interesting. So all right. I think it's definitely solid. I, I, I like my Masato stuff. I like my Ray stuff. I've been getting in this. Yeah, like, Ray's obviously Ray's my favorite the Kaji character. Kaji stuff has been welcoming. Like the Toji stuff and like the school stuff has been like a welcome change to see. Like, um, I like seeing all the char- weird different character interactions instead of like the standard we've seen. It's great. It's just wonderfully, wonderfully made series. So her, her Ava is Mari's Ava. It's eight. Okay, I knew it was like bullshit. Yeah, I was looking up model kits. So that's why I didn't want to spoil myself. That's like the safest way I can do it. <laughs> I knew it was like weird bullshit. I don't remember if they like give her a different one between eh, movies or something. Yeah, eh, we, we don't like fucker. <laughs> we don't like Mari here. No. Um. But yeah, I'm. I said I'm excited to <laughs> to keep going. We're almost there. Despite like at this point, we still have not released an episode out. <laughs> it's true. We're still hoarding these. So. But I'm like I'm excited to just to get to the end. So I can actually like not be left in the hole and see every Ava reference in every fucking it's piece true. of media. You'll finally, you'll finally get every Ava reference. Good. We gotta finish the series before the, the batches of part six come out. So <laughs> yeah. That's the important thing. Soon. So. Alright. Anything else? Or should I... Or Please I pl- plug this up. What am I plugging? Uh, plug... Uh, plug the dummy plug. The dummy plug. <laughs> yeah, dumb, dummy, dummy, <laughs> dummy, dummy thick dummy plug. The d- this dummy thick dummy. Thank you all very much for check- listening to this. Again, if you haven't, you can like the video, you can comment on it, or you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also follow the podcast or read your gym separately on Twitter, and you also can join the Discord if you would like to. And with that, we will see you next time. So what, we're on episode 19 next? 19 and 20 we'll probably do next. Damn. Time. And 26 episodes total? Yeah. Damn. I know. We're almost there. All right. We'll see you next time on the next AvaCast. Bye-bye. <laughs>